Hallelujah. Keep the whole move. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord for being Lord and Savior. We thank God that we're in the house of God once again. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For worthy is our God to be praised. I thank God for all of you that's online. And I thank God for those that chose to come to the house of God today. And I say to the ones that's watching online, praise God. You can create that worship experience right there wherever you are. If you would dedicate that time to the Lord and stay focused to hear what God wants to do, he can move right there in your presence, in your house, your car, wherever you might be listening. But we welcome you for being a part of our service today. And again, thank God for all of you that chose to come to the house of the Lord today. As usual, your pastor's fired up because the word says, I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I was glad. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. I bless the Lord. Those that have your Bibles and you're able to uh, stand with me as we go to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. Praise God. And we're going to start at verse 11. 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 11. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariot and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God rose early and went out there, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered, that the word will fall on good soil, and that your word will take root, that it may bring forth the fruit that you desire in the name of Jesus. For the enemy shall not steal that which is sin, but it will remain and come forth in fruition. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it to be so. And we thank you for all that you have done, yet doing, and all that you're about to do. We give thee thanks and bless thy holy name and declare it to be so. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. As I was meditating and, and, and just thanking, Lord, what word would you have me to share today? This particular passage of scripture came to my spirit. And as I began to reflect on this passage of scripture, the Lord began to minister to my spirit. If I had to use for a topic, because this kept raining in my spirit as I reflected on this passage, if I had to use for a topic, I would say, not seeing does not mean unprotected. 
Not sin does not mean unprotected. Let that resonate. Just because you don't see does not mean you're not protected. Praise God. And so as we begin to look at this passage of scripture, I'll bring you up to speed. Praise God. The king of Syria was coming against Israel. And as he began to come against them, and he was making his strategic plan about how he was going to attack Israel, praise God. As he began to make those plans to come up against them, and he would say, okay, we're going to go this route, and this is going to be our attacking point, the king of Israel would be already prepared when they come their way. This didn't just happen once, but it happened two or three times. So the king of Syria got a little upset. He called them all together, and he said to them, who in the world is in our team that's sharing our plan? In other words, he thought one of his own people had to be spying and getting the word to the enemy because every time they planned an attack, the enemy was already aware of that attack and where to hit. Ain't that just like God? What did the song say? It was the Holy Ghost. The song said it was the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what speaks to our spirit when we got a relationship to tell us what we need to know and what next step. It's the Holy Ghost. And so as he began to speak, one of the servants of the king, he said, it's none of us, Lord, because they called the king Lord, Lord Case, because he was in charge. Because the king had authority, and when the king spoke, that's what it was. And they recognized that position. And one of his uh, servants said, it ain't none of us. We're not spying, and we're not sharing information. It ain't nobody but that prophet, Elisha, over there in Israel. In other words, he recognized the man of God that was hearing from God. See, when you live your life and you walk by the word, and you're obedient to what God says, God would even let your enemy know that he's leading you along the way. The enemy told the king, he said, it ain't none of us, but it's that prophet Elisha over there, and his God is telling him, and he's telling the king. That's why they read it for us every time we come. The king of Syria got so furious, upset, he says, okay, let's go get him. Where is he at? And the servant said, he ain't nowhere but over there in Dothan. Elisha won't make it in no secret where he was at. His trust was in God, not afraid of the enemy. God wants us to see some lessons behind this word. See, when we read the word of God, we need to understand certain principles that we can apply in our everyday life with what we are dealing with. Yes, these are stories about what happened. But from these stories, we learn lessons of how to use the same strategy that was used to get us through what we are going through. And so as they prepared and the king says, get all the chariots and all the horses and y'all go to Dothan and get him because I want him brought to me. The king says, I'm going to deal with this prophet. He messing up my business. Because I was going in there to take the city and he keep messing up my plans. I'm bringing it down to everyday language so you can understand it. This is the way he was talking if it had been in our time right now today. I'm going to have my business. I'm going after this prophet. And y'all need to bring him to me so I can show him that I'm the king and he don't mess with me. But understand something. When you belong to the Lord, the enemy don't have enough power to stop what God wants to do. He sent chariots and all these horses. Now chariots is like the top of the line. So that'd be like our tanks and our top military weapons when we go after the enemy. Because if you could have chariots and all them horses, you was wealthy. So the king sent the best of the best to go get this one prophet. 
The king ain't going to take it no chance. You're going at one man and you're going to send all these horses and chariots to go get one man. That tell you something right there. The king knew I ain't dealing with no ordinary person. Sometimes we sell ourselves short. We don't recognize the God that's in our life. We running around talking about what I can't do. I haven't done that before. I'm nervous. I'm scared. We don't walk in our strength. We walk in the strength of the Lord. Because the word says, in him, I live and move and have my being. I don't move in my own strength. It's not my might. It's not my power. But it's by the spirit of the Lord. It's his strength that I walk in. But I have to believe what he say and act like I believe. And so they go to Dothan. While Elisha and his servant is asleep, they surround the city. All of these chariots and all of these horses, they got the city surrounded for this one man. When they wake up, the servant goes out there and see all the enemy round about them. He come back and he says, Master, they got us covered. They have encircled the whole city. What we going to do? Now, Elisha was cool. He, he, I, I, I thought about that thing. Elisha looked at the servant. He didn't even get up. He didn't go out there worrying about how many enemies was out there. He told the servant, he said, look, they that be with us is more than they that be with them. Now, the servant sitting up there saying in his mind, he ain't going to question the king. He saying to himself, I know I just went out there and I saw all of them chariots with the city surrounded. I ain't see nobody that was on our side. But I did see the enemy everywhere. City surrounded. They got us closed in. And he talking about them that be with us are more than them with them. He like, I know you're the master, but is, is everything all right? Y'all know how you do. Let's get real here. You know what you see in the natural. And he telling me that the one that's on our side is more than them. And I don't see nobody on our side. But he's telling me we got more than they got. And I see all of the enemy. When he said that, Elisha turned around and prayed, Lord, open his eyes so that he can see. And when he prayed, Lord, open the eyes of his young servant that was with him. God let him see all the chariots surrounding the enemy. Now check this out. God said chariots of fire. The enemy just had chariots and the soldiers around. But God had the enemy surrounded with chariots of fire. God had more firepower. Yes. Now, even though the, the young man didn't see it beforehand, they were still covered while they were asleep. Did y'all catch that? Yes. Lord knows if that didn't bless me. Yes, see, when it looked like nothing is happening, God still got us covered. Yes. They sleep. The enemy boxing them in. But God got his army right there ready to take the enemy out. You and me must recognize who we are in God. That doesn't mean that I get everything right all the time. See, the enemy plays these tricks. And he make you feel like you got to be superhuman. That you can't err. If you live in this earth. You're going to make some mistakes, and I don't care how much you love the Lord. But God still got you covered because he's looking at the heart and not just tallying every time I make a mistake. But the enemy tried to get us counting. Well, I messed up here and I messed up there. Lord, is God going to look out for me now because I ain't do what I'm supposed to do on this time today. The devil's selling you all that stuff to create doubt because he knows if you believe God and still walk in what God says, he's losing. 
So he speak all this stuff to your mind so that you will give up and say, well, nah, the Lord ain't going to let that go. I better not do that because I ain't doing what I supposed to do. God says we walk by faith and not by sight. And we better understand that. Now, let me help you understand something. And I say this all the time. God is not a magician. He's not just pulling stuff out in the air and, 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 and poof and there it is and all of that. No, nah, he's not there. God declares the truth of his word. And he says when we walk by faith and not by sight, it's his word that's being honored because God is not a man that he shall lie. If God speak it, it is so. And see, that's what we've got to settle. See, we so used to basing the truth on what we can see. But everything you see is not the truth. It looked like the truth. It sounds like the truth sometimes, but it's not the truth. And I'm going to give you a prime example to help you understand exactly what I'm talking about. You've been walking down the street and you look over there and you thought you saw somebody and you just are waving, hey, Susan, hey, John. And you get up there and you're like, Lord, that ain't no Susan. That ain't no John. They think I'm crazy. And I'm just waving, thinking that Susan or John. You thought you saw Susan or John. But when you got closer, it was not Susan or John. So that's why you can't base it on what you see. You better base it on what you know. God is saying, don't base it on what you see, but base it on what you know. Elisha didn't have to get up out of his sleep to go out and see the enemy. He already knew that God had him covered because of the relationship with the Lord. We must know that God got us covered in spite of what's going on. And see, when God began to let this truth resonate within me, it's a simple truth. But see, that's the problem. We want to complicate the word of God and make it so religious. And it's got to be done a certain way before we believe that it's God. All God is looking for somebody to be real. That's all they're looking for. If we be real with the Lord and take this word as an everyday word and apply it to what's happening, we will see the hand of God move in our lives. But when we try to be so religious, like we so holy, yes, we're supposed to be holy, but holiness is a way of life. It's a heart change. It does not mean you ain't going to never sin. It does not mean you ain't going to sidestep. But what it means is when I sidestep and the Holy Ghost is pricking at my heart and say, okay, get back in line. I'm going to say, oh, yep, I stepped out, Lord. Thank you. And forgive me and step right back in step. And God put us back on the course and let us keep marching. But see, the enemy make you think every time you make a mistake, God doesn't kick you out or he's not going to set God doesn't work like that. The Bible says we are saved by grace and not by works. Grace means he accepted me for who I was, even though I wasn't thinking about it. Even though I wasn't trying to live for him. But because he loved me so much, he says, while they are sinners, I'm still going to die for them. Because I see the value in them. I created them, I made them, and because I made them after my image, and I put purpose and plan within them, oh no, the devil is not going to have them. But God gave man free will. God said in his word, I knew the end from the beginning. So what he was saying is before we were ever delivered here on this earth, once we were conceived in our mother's womb, God already knew us and knew the plan that he had established for us. And when we got here, what he wants us to do is walk that plan out and seek him and let him show us that plan instead of trying to go our own way. That's why with us parents, sometimes we trying to make plans for our children and line this up and say, you got to do this and you got to do that. Now, find out what God wants them to do and put them on that path. And let them line themselves with the purpose that God called them to do. And let them fulfill what God called them to do. We got to make it real. N Hallelujah. Lord, bless me. Not sin does not mean unprotected. 
And the word let us know that as they begin to move forward and God showed the young man all the chariots of fire that had the enemy surrounded, praise God, they were able to let the enemy walk right in the midst of their camp. And then what did uh, Elisha said? He says, okay, Lord, I need you to strike them with blindness. In other words, Elisha spoke the word and said, would you make these folk blind? And when they made the enemy blind, he led them right into the camp and took them to the enemy territory that they was trying to go again. Do you see what God did? He took the enemy who was against them, let the man of God lead them to the people that they wanted to destroy. And then he told the people that were going to destroy them when the enemy was delivered to them, they said, shall we kill them? He said, no. Feed them and send them back. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Love your enemy. You don't love what they do, but you love them. Because just as God loved us, while we were yet sinners, he loves them. God is concerned about souls. He don't care nothing about no membership. He wants souls into his kingdom. Now, he's got an assignment for you at a certain house or body or whatever, because that's where your gift is going to come forth that he placed in you to prepare to do the work so you can play your part in helping build his kingdom by winning souls into the kingdom. See, you are uniquely made. Each one of us, we're uniquely different. That's why none of us got the same fingerprint. We can be twins, but we ain't going to have the same fingerprint because we each got our own identity. But God created you that way because he needs you to be who he created you so you can reach the folk that he's got a sign for you to reach to expand his kingdom. So not seeing does not mean you're not unprotected. And as God began to minister to the Elisha and the servant, that was a great lesson for the servant to be able to see is that we must learn how to rely on the word of God. And when you rely on the word of God, anxiety does not take over. That's why it's by faith and not by sight. And I know sometimes I can seem so unconcerned and I, and I talk to the Lord about it all the time because you can say, Pastor, will you pray for this and will you pray for that? And I say, yes, and I'm going to pray. Your, your pastor don't act all that religious, okay? But if I tell you I'm going to pray, I'm going to speak the word because when you ask for it, I already believe that God is moving by his spirit before I ever utter the words. And because I believe it, I go on confidently knowing that I'm going to pray, but I'm confidently believing that God going to honor his word because I already know what the word of God says about what you're asking to be prayed for. And so I'm making my declaration and I'm already in the spirit, hearing in the spirit when you ask for that prayer request, what God want me to base it on. And so I hear you, but when you look at me, it might seem like it went in one ear and out the other ear, and that's not the case. And I have to wrestle with that because I know the enemy is so used to people basing everything on what they see. But I'm not a religious person, and people say, how in the world are you going to be a pastor and not be religious? That's the problem. There's too much religion going on and not enough relationship with God. Folk are tired of re religion. Because religion ain't getting nothing changed. It's relationship that brings about change because we're trusting God for his word and not running around trying to keep a rule book. But we're trying to live the word and make it a part of our everyday life. That's what God is looking for is relationship. But the enemy does not want the people of God to understand relationship. Because if he keeps you religious, that means you are following rules, and when you're following rules, he can hold you hostage. Because every time you mess up on one of the rules, you feel so guilty, you're ready to give up. 
because you try so hard to keep the rule and it seems like the harder you try, you keep messing up and you said it ain't working. But God wants you to understand right now today, it ain't based on our strength, but it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. It's in him and faith in his word that brings about the change. And when we trust God at his word, we're going to declare his word. And as I said, when I pray, I already believe God going to move in his spirit. And see, the thing is, God wants us to understand he's still God regardless of what goes on. But see, sometimes, and as I was sharing with us doing praise and worship, because you may not have any issues going on right now, and the song and the music is sounding good, you're enjoying it, you may get enjoying in. But see, we have to learn how to store up our treasures in heaven before we have a need. See, when you go to work, you start saving for your retirement when you start to work, not when it's time to retire. You put it aside all along so when you retire, you got investments and stuff laid up for you to live off of. When we work in the kingdom of God, it says lay your treasures up in heaven where the thief can't get to. So what it's saying is, I do what God asked me to do now while I'm in my good health. While I got my voice, while this is going and that's going and everything is all right, I prayed in because when it comes a time of need, when I can't, I just write the check on the bank of heaven because I've already stored it up. It's there. In other words, by faith, I begin to write the check. The scripture says, with the tongue, my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. So by me speaking that word, I begin to write out what I need from the Lord. I'm not writing it on no bank on the corner, but I'm writing it on the bank of heaven where there is no shortage. It's all done by faith. And God says, yep, they store it up. And when that check hit heaven, it clears the account. God sends it back. And begins to work on our behalf. But the thing that God wants us to understand is because we work, walk by faith and not by sight. See, sometimes we don't see God at work because we're so comfortable because nothing is happening in our lives to disrupt what we're going on. We're so used to everything going smoothly. But as soon as we have an emergency or tragedy hits, we're in a panic mode because we was not prepared for it. But if we had been prepared all along, the Bible says, in this life, you shall have tribulation. See, saints believe that because they are saved, nothing happens to them. You're in a contaminated world. And because we're in a contaminated world, we're going to get bruised every now and then. We're going to get hit every now and then. But the Bible says, be of good cheer, for he has overcome, we will overcome. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. But see, the thing is, we want God to do it when we want him to do it. But he's a sovereign God, and he's not going to do it until he get ready to do it. But see, you got to understand something. While God is working, I may not see him at work. But he's still yet working on my inner spirit being. Preparing it to come to pass. And I may not even feel him or sense him at all. Because y'all hear me say all the time, that sometimes you don't even feel like you say. You know you say, you know the love of the Lord. But there's some days you just don't even feel like you're there. But you're there because God says it's by grace and not by word. When the saints understand that truth and quit trying to let man dictate to you about some rule and determine them. Because, see, when you accept the Lord and saints see you mess up or whatever, the first, I knew it wasn't going to last. They right back doing that same thing that they were. 
They made a mistake. That don't mean they're out of the family because they made a mistake. You was born in your family and it had a reputation and you messed up outside of the reputation. Does it kick you out of the family? You still part of that family whether you live like that family or not. See, we, we got to understand the reality. This is not a, a, a storybook. The Bible says in John 6 and 63, it says that these words, they are spirit and they are life. This is the power to change our situation. But we have to understand it's God's time and it's not our time. But all God wants you to understand and wants me to understand not seeing does not mean that I'm unprotected. This final example as I close it out. If you ever been on a cruise or you just been standing in your backyard at night time, the later in the part of the night, if you look up in the sky, you can see the stars. The darker it is, the brighter those stars are. But the lighter it is, you don't see all the stars. But guess what? The stars are still there. But it's too light. You can't see them. What God is saying is sometimes in our lives, there's trouble there because for some reason we can't see God until trouble hits. And then when trouble hits, we want to seek God with everything we got because we need him to change what we're going through. But God is trying to get us to the point that we seek him with all we got before we get in trouble. That's what he's asking for, because we know who he is and we know who we are in him. And so we learn how to give him full praises before we get caught. But because we get comfortable, because we're not going through nothing, none of our friends or immediate circle is experiencing any hardship. We live life like we're going to be here forever, doing our own little thing. And because of that, we can't see God moving and we don't experience him moving, even though he's moving every moment. What we fail to realize, our breathing, which is instant. If God didn't allow that breath, we'd be gone just like that in a second. But we so used to breathing, we take it for granted. But in a second, it could change. Because I know this week my phone was blowing up. Either somebody was leaving here, got sent to the hospital, this emergency, that emergency, all of that stuff came up. But all God is saying is the hardness and the situation that you're dealing with, it may seem dark, but all that is is to build a testimony so you can see God even the more because as you work through that hardship that you're faced with don't focus on the hardship but focus on the God that you believe in to help you through it and to understand that he's still God regardless and when we have that right attitude watch God works but our protection is there whether we see it or not those stars are in place whether I see them or not but the darker it is, I can see it much clearer and much better. So sometimes that's the staring up and that's the reason for a lot of our situations sometimes is God trying to make you realize I'm still here. You living like I ain't here, but I'm still here. You need to know I'm in your life. I need you back on track. I need you to refocus and give your attention to me. So sometimes he had to shake stuff up so we can see him clear. Because if he creates some turmoil in your life, you come into the Lord. You know, you're going to ask for some help for somebody you know can get through. But you're going to seek the Lord because you know this is beyond you. Not seeing does not mean unprotected. The choir may come at this time. We thank God for the word. And if you're here this morning and you're outside of the family of God, or if you're not sure, we want to share with you the word of God. If you're online, for the scripture says, it's by grace that we are saved 
and not by works. Amen. Praise God. We invite you and we'll share with you the word of God. See, it's believing and accepting the work that's already been done. Not in what I feel, not in what I think, and not what I've been told, but what does the word of God say? And that's what we've got to understand. What does the word of God say? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I bless the name of the Lord. You may come and we'll share the word of God if there is one outside so that you'll know. But understand, it's faith in the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. As a choir saint. If there are prayer requests, you may let that request be made known as we prepare to go before the throne of grace. Whatever your act of contact or faith, whether it's lifting your hand, standing at your seat, whatever, God will honor that point of contact. But let your request be made known before the Lord. God hears all requests and he does not get confused. Amen. Praise God. It's by faith that you lift that request up. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. The pieces. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Miss Lyons. Mr. Allen. Praise, praise God. We, Julia, Donna, Tomas. Praise, praise the Lord. Oh, come, let Thank you, Jesus. Adore praise the Lord. Oh, come, those that are online. The Lord is moving on behalf of those requests as well. Give those requests to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time. God, we lift up these requests that have gone before you. The word says, let our request be made known. And Father, we have let that request be made known unto you right now. But God, as we have given you that request, we acknowledge your sovereignty. God, because you are a God of eternity and we are a people of time. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we trust you within the matter that we've given unto you right now. Yes, our request has been made known, but because of your sovereignty, God, we align our request with that that you desire because, God, we are limited in what we can see, but, God, you can see beyond what we can see, so we trust you in the matter. Father, we appreciate all that you have done, yet doing, and all that you're about to do. God, we pray for our loved ones, God, that you continue to keep Covered. God, we pray that by your spirit that you minister to the request, for there is no distance in your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. For God, we stand upon thy word and we let thy word, which is life and spirit, bring about that change. For we walk by faith and not by sight, realizing that death and life is in the power of the tongue, and we choose to speak a lot by declaring your word. Not declaring what we see, but declaring your word. Not ignoring what we see, but declaring your word. Even though what we see may look real, but what you say is, is the absolute truth. And we stand upon that truth of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, and that's where we choose to place our focus. Not denying what we may be seeing with our natural eye, but not allowing what we see to dictate on what we act or say, but that we will still remain with our eyes looking unto you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Lord, we bless you and we thank you for it is so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You may return rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we'll receive our vows. Praise the Lord. The announcements. Call in for Bible study conference call each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Call in to 716-427-1144 and use PIN number 604740. To donate, use 919-371-0115. Text giving. Cash App is now available. If interested in giving electronically, use the Continue to Give app. Please see Trustee Carter Bean or Trustee Sheila Bailey to assist you with setting your phone up with this app. Please bring new items for donation for the Central Children's Home. Toothpaste, socks, deodorant. Please do not donate razors. Please donate to the scholarship fund with a donation of $20. The money raised will go towards helping our members that are attending college. See Reverend Dan for details. Intercessory prayer is held every Saturday at 10 a.m. Please use the same calling number that is used for Bible study, except for on second and first Saturdays, it will be held at church at 11 o'clock. If you will not be riding the van, please notify Deacon Langston Saturday before Sunday service or as soon as you know that you will need you will not need a ride. We apologize for omitting harvest dues in the bulletin for the month of October and November. We are asking members to pay $100 for harvest dues. Our deepest condolences to Sister Maxine Lyons on the loss of her two bro- of her brothers this week. Please remember to pray for our sick and shut in. Give a call in the hand when you can. Um, do we have any visitors? If so, would you like to stand and say anything? We thank you for coming to worship with us today. We hope that you, you enjoyed your visit so well that you'll come back and visit with us again. I turn it back over to Pastor. Praise God. Amen. We bless the Lord for those announcements and ask that you keep them in mind, that you'll be able to lend your support. Praise God at that time. Amen. Praise God. And we're getting ready uh, to prepare to receive our tithes and our offerings. And I always like to share a scripture. So I'm going to Genesis 8, 22. And it reads, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. The word says that while this earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So when we give of our tithes and our offering, praise God, we are sowing our seed. And because we are sowing our seed, we will receive the harvest. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if the ushers will direct you from the rear, our larger basket is for our tithes and our offering. Praise God. And the smaller basket on my, my right, your left is going to be for paying off the church building early and then the basket on my left your right is going to be for the youth anniversary amen Amen. praise god if you like to contribute towards that amen and the ushers will direct you from the rear praise god
precious name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up these tithes and offerings before you. Out of obedience to thy word, have we given back unto you a portion of that that you have given unto us. And because we have given back unto you according to your word, we thank you for blessing according to your word, Father. In Jesus' name, we praise thee and thank thee for thy blessings. Amen. 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 Praise God. We appreciate the Lord. And before we prepare to dismiss at this time, have Sister Sally, uh, Sim, and Oliver with us this morning. Amen. She uh, decides she want to be unite with this local body and become a member here. Amen. Praise, praise, praise God. Amen. 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 Her and her husband, they've been visiting with us for quite some time. She comes from Union Baptist uh, Church out of Durham. Amen. Amen. And now in our area, and she risked wish to unite with us so we want to welcome her she's no stranger to this house yeah. praise god but she has been here and we will set the official date with certificate of membership and all of that and coordinate everything with you but you're definitely welcome and we appreciate you following the spirit of god as he directed you here to this house amen, amen. 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 praise god and with that being said we're going to prepare to dismiss at this time but uh our recording clerk, she will get the details with we'll you right at the end of the service. Amen. Praise God. I ask that you repeat after me. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much power. Much power. Little prayer. Little prayer. Little power. Little power. Little power. No prayer. No prayer. No power. No power. Amen. Amen. Praise God.